pets. Just why super auto pets of all things? I have all these games in my Steam library, and yet I've spent this many hours on the dumb fucking emoji game. Okay, just, just let me explain myself. I've known about the existence of this game for quite some time now. I knew that big streamers like Ludwig and Northern Lion were into it, but streamers are into a lot of games that look like ass. From an outsider looking in, it just looked like your average phone game with minimal amounts of strategy and depth to it. That was not a joke for the intro. It literally uses phone emojis. However, what pushed me into actually trying the game for myself was talking to my friend Azur. He mentioned to me that he had recently gotten addicted to Super Auto Pets and had been spending a lot of his free time playing it. I mentioned this to my other friend Shane and he said the exact same thing. At this point, I was thoroughly fucking confused. What is this game? Why is it becoming so popular with everyone I know? It's it's just a simple phone game, right? Right? This game fucking oh! Super Auto Pets is one of the best strategy games I've played in years. I know, this sounds like I'm joking, you know, pulling your leg is the funny kids like to say, but it just is. I really don't know how else to put it. It has the overall simplicity of a Flash game on the surface, but the more you dive into it, the more depth and intricacies of the combat begin to show. Basically, the goal of the game is to win 10 rounds by creating a team of up to 5 bloodthirsty animals and pinning them up against random opponents. Every single pet in the game has its own ability that can level up to 3 times, which can range from kinda doo-doo to... What the fu- What is going on? What is going on? Yeah, I plan that to happen. But let me just start by explaining the first free pack of the game. <laughs> pack 1 has a total of 58 pets and 16 different foods to choose from. The way the game is structured is that each round you have 10 gold to purchase both pets and food for 3 gold. What food does is it gives a selection of buffs to the pets in your team. This can include higher stats like damage and health, shields, higher EXP, or just fucking killing them? Why would I want to kill a pet on my team? Look at that guy, he's just having fun, he's just, he's just chilling. Each pet also has its own tier which dictates when you are able to buy it. The higher the tier of the animal, the better abilities and stats it usually has. Usually. I, I mean, sometimes they can still be pretty ass. The way that you unlock higher tiers is just by advancing the game. After two rounds within each tier, you advance to the next one, with a cap at tier 6. This is where the first glimpse of strategy can show up. If you have two of the same pet in your shop or on your team, you can combine them for both a minor stat boost and level progress. For a pet to go from level 1 to level 2, you need to combine three of the same pets. And for level 3, you need to combine three more to that same pet. Levels also stack. So say you have two fish that are both, you know, level 2. Well, just woo, slap those babies together and you have yourself a level 3. Other than just improving the stats of the pet, leveling up also upgrades the ability of that specific pet. While I know this is already getting a little, a little bonkers, a little out of control. If you have a pet go up a level, a random pet of the next highest tier will appear in your shop. To show how just fucking insane this is, let's go over how this can be used to your advantage in the early game. So let's say you start a match and you see you have two fish within your shop. So you buy one of the fish and you freeze the other one in your shop. What this does is it ensures that the pet stays in your shop no matter if you reroll or engage in a fight. The downside to doing this is that it now takes up a slot in your shop that could spawn a better pet. In our case for this demonstration, we want to keep the funny thing. So we win the first round, and the next buy phase begins. Here we buy the fish, but combine it once with one of our already pre-existing fish. Now even though we could have already leveled up our pet already, we wait until the next round to do it. The reason for this is that most tier 2 pets are really only okay. Most of them are mediocre at best, but there are a lot of great tier 3 pets. So we combine our fish now, and it gives everyone on our team plus one plus one stats, and now we have a tier 3 pet way earlier than we are supposed to. Do you see now? Do you see what I mean? This isn't even a high level play, this is like basic. This is something I learned like day one. It's fucking absurd. So, so okay, 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 okay. You thought that was cool. Just, just wait until you hear about the synergies this game can have, because this is where the game fucking shines. 
As I mentioned earlier, every pet has its own ability that can be upgraded. This can include giving a permanent stat boost to another character, doing additional damage at the start of the round, and, and so on. A lot of, you know, the basic types of shit you'd see in any sort of game like this. However, there are some abilities that can lead to some pretty fun strategies. Let's use the ant for example. The ant has quite ass stats starting out, but on death, it gives a random pet in your party plus two plus one stats. The problem though, is that this stat boost is not permanent and only sticks around for the duration of that fight. But what if I told you that we could change that? I mean, they don't call me big brain super G for nothing. You know what I'm saying? Hey, oh, up top gamers. Remember that pill that I mentioned earlier? Well, this food is unique in that it only costs one gold instead of the usual three. So this means that you can spend one gold in the shop to permanently kill your ant, giving someone random in your party the stat boost, but now it is permanent. This is so fucking cool. Just think of the possibilities. Now you're looking at all your characters with a feign ability in a whole new light. Take the ox, for example. The ox is one of the best tier three pets in the game solely due to its ability. If the pet in front of it faints in battle, then the ox gains plus one attack and something called melon armor. What melon armor does is it allows the animal to take up to 30 damage without losing any health. So what that means is that for the early game, the ox gets essentially one free hit every match as long as one of your pets in front of it dies. But what if we could make it better? Let's say we have a doo-doo ass pet in front of the ox. Well, we could just sell it for one gold, but you know, big brain super G plays coming at, uh, coming at you is to pill the animal in front of the ox. This now both gives the ox melon armor and the plus one damage buff permanently. And you wanna know something funny? Something that'll make your belly shake in glee? Oh shit! The buff fucking stacks! So if you still keep a pet in front of the ox, it'll gain an additional plus one damage on top of the permanent buff. This game is so good, man. I fucking, I fucking love this game. All of Super Auto Pets is filled to the brim with things like this. And if you still aren't convinced, let's go over one of my favorite scumbag synergies, the Honey Badger. Like everyone fucking hates it, but I love it. I love it. It's just a dickhead thing to do. One of the foods in the shop that you can give to your pets to hold is honey. Whenever a pet that is holding honey dies, it spawns a bee in its place. This is absolutely essential for the pet in the back of the squad, due solely to the fact that the win state is just having your squad survive longer than the opponent's squad. So if the last two pets kill each other, the opponent will be out of pets, and I will still have the stinky bee that spawns at the end of the battle. It's such an annoying tactic, and I fucking love it. But what if we can make it even more annoying? Well, that's where the badger comes in. What the badger does is on death, it attacks with double its current damage to the pet in front and behind it. What this means is that if it's at the back of the squad with honey on it, on death, it will damage the enemy because that is technically the only pet in front of it, which most of the time in the early game kills the enemy. After the badger does its attack, then the bee spawns. This basically means that you have a fucking suicide bomber in the back that takes out everything in its path and you can still sneak in the win with the annoying ass plus one plus one B. But fuck that shit! Want a giga chat move? Level up that badger to level three and put its ass in the front. I'm not kidding. This shit will actually rocket your team into late game, I swear to God. I love this game. When the badger becomes level three, it now does three times its base damage on health. When you start to get up there in rounds, you begin to see enemies with max health and damage, rocking shit like melon armor, and it just becomes annoying. Well, if you have a badger in the front with decent enough damage, you can basically wipe out a ton of those high level enemies because of just how much damage your badger does on death. And if you put a disposable pet behind it like a turtle that drops melon armor on death and doesn't really do much more than that, well now you have an efficient way to give a good pet on your team melon armor. Do you see it yet? Think of the possibilities, motherfucker! Ah! <laughs> oh, it's hot in my room. 
It's very hot. I'm like sweating. I like, I, I can't, I'm sweating. This is where Super Auto Pets absolutely shines. Just the sheer amount of synergies you can have. Do you have a bunch of enemies that summon? Get a turkey that buff summons and a tiger that repeats the turkey's ability and suddenly you're the most annoying piece of shit in the game. Why won't you die, nano machine son? See a bunch of hedgehogs? Well, you could combine them at the back of your squad like a little bitch. Or you could be a fat ass gamer like me and put all those hedgehogs in the front for maximum chaos. I'm serious. If you want to guarantee wins in the early game, but also guarantee you won't get 10 wins, do this strategy. It's so much fucking fun. I it's, I, I guarantee it. That does kind of lead me to my biggest problem with the game at the moment though. You see, the developers have been doing an utterly fantastic job at keeping the game updated and changing the meta. But there is one thing that they kind of just can't fix with the game, and that is the necessity of stats. A lot of these really cool synergies you've seen throughout the video doesn't really end with me winning the game. That's because as the game goes on, you start to see opponents that have just solely focused on scaling their pets to max stats, and your fun gimmick build will be left in the dust. I'm not necessarily saying it's a bad thing that the game rewards the player for focusing on stats, but I do feel that the game should be rewarding the fun synergies more than just ass blasting the stats with a bison and monkey. It's a small complaint, but it does bother me at times. So that's the base pack of Super Auto Pets, a shockingly deep and fun tactics game that has kept me coming back for literal months. While it's not perfect, and I personally believe that the game still does need some balancing, it is shockingly some of the most fun I've had playing a game in a long time. And fucking Elden Ring just came out. I fucking like this game more than Elden Ring, I'm not kidding. But we've just talked about the free pack. Like I explained earlier, the game also has two other pet packs that you have to pay money for. So let's start with pack two. Eh. Pack two is honestly more of the same. There are arguments on whether or not it's worse than the free pack, but I think it's fun. They took away some of the pets from the original pack, like the giraffe, otter, and replaced them with new ones like the ladybug, eagle, and buffalo. Even with that, there's still a lot of fun combinations you can do, like having a level 3 turtle behind a microbe, which means that all your pets have melon armor, and all of your opponents now take two times more damage because that's some grade A ass play if I've ever seen it. But honestly, I can see people being disappointed that this pack doesn't really do anything too drastic to the game. For $5, it really does seem to kind of play it safe. I don't think that's a bad thing, honestly. And while I personally think it's absolutely worth the price of a fucking McChicken, I, I can understand why some people may be turned off. Now, pack three, on the other hand, now this is pod racing. <laughs> you know what I'm... <laughs> they added in a whopping... 57 new pets and 15 wholly unique foods. Like, Jesus Christ, guys, do you think that might have been a bit overkill? I'm not kidding when I say that this new pack drastically changes the dynamic of the game. And it's just honestly a lot of fun. Let's start with the new food, which I honestly find to be the most interesting change of the game. You see, in the first two packs, most of the food was either a form of armor, stat buffs, level ups, or a pill. Now, while there's a lot of strategy to do with those foods, pack three flips that idea on its head by adding in foods with negative stat effects. For example, the new broccoli gives a pet plus three health but lowers their damage by one point. Fried shrimp, on the other hand, does the opposite by giving plus three damage, but minus one health. But you know what? <laughs> Fuck all those other foods, because we got strawberries now, boys, girls, and non-binary friends. This shit is so cool, because on the surface, strawberries do nothing to the pet holding it. However, what it does mean is that this pet can now activate the strawberry abilities. Basically, a lot of the new pets have added abilities that are only activated if a pet on your team has strawberries. This can include giving the animals holding the strawberry a buff, buffing themselves, or even doing just big damage to the other enemies on the team. <sighs> I, I love this patch. I love it. You know, as much as I love Repentance, and I still very much do, by the way, after making that video, I got, like, pretty heavily burnt out on the game. I don't know, like maybe it was spending hundreds of hours of my life thinking about that game and making a video on it, but it really did burn me out. That really hasn't been a problem with Super Auto Pets. 
Like, the entire time I've been working on this video, in my free time, I still play Super Auto Pets. And honestly, it's just so heartwarming to me to see another game made by an equally passionate and small indie studio that gets an expansion with as much love and soul poured into it as this one. It's a lot like Repentance in that way. And I haven't even scratched the surface of it. They added weekly packs that are free to everyone which means that even if you haven't paid for the expansions yet, you'll still have the opportunity to try out a few of the characters you wouldn't normally be able to play as. And in a future update, they're adding deck building, which now allows you to create your own pack and go against other opponents with their own packs. I fucking love this game. Team Wood. Lovers. Whoa! I don't know if you'll watch this video, but if you are, I want you to know that you guys have just really inspired me with this game. You took a game that was clearly made on a budget and poured so much love and attention into it that it's basically become an overnight phenomenon. And instead of just resting on your laurels and going, ah, that's it, that's ah, good enough. No, no! You instead decided to continually add more and more to the game until it's so good that it goes toe to toe with a lot of big budget strategy games out there. Hearthstone, Runeterra, all the other battle chess games out there. I genuinely recommend any fans of those games to give this game a try. So thank you, Team Wood. Thank you for overtaking my life and free time with one of the best casual games I've ever played. I'll support you guys with whatever you want to do in the future. And of course we gotta give this game a score, so <laughs> Angry Joe, take it away. A full, highest rating that I can issue, 10 out of 10, and it easily earns the badass seal of approval.